growing up, our area had some sugarcane plantations, not very large as to supply millers, but just enough for local consumption. During dry seasons, the cases of fire outbreaks are very prevalent. You may find that this farm caught fire by accident or design, and the whole area would be burned down if people do not work together to contain the fire. No one would escape fire by going to keep watch of his own farm. You do that and, find, and, finally, and finally see your investment raised out since it is not possible to contain such raging fires on your own. You had to take the initiative to go help putting it out. However far it could be from your, far, from your farm, so it does not consume many other people's properties and eventually reach your own. I remember a certain time when this fire thing became like a joke. People started using it as a way to get even and eventually the whole area went up in flames, one after the other, day and night. Since this was one of the major, major economic activities, the economy literally plummeted and farming began to bite. Everyone suffered. Leadership does not have to be focused only on the sheep in your fold, the members of your orchestra. No, it should transcend that confine. It should be able to affect the lives of those who are outside your territory as well, including those who vehemently oppose you. It should be both borderless and selfless. It can, it can affect the lives of those outside your borders directly or otherwise. It, it could be due to the influence or the examples you set. Many of us who are currently learning from some of the world's greatest leaders who ever lived did not have the privilege to live with them in the same country. And among those who are lucky enough to share boundaries with these leaders, generational differences perhaps diluted the possibility of direct impact. You are the great leader of the moment. Do not deny your people the feeling of contentment that comes with having an effective leader on board. The world needs more leaders than great preachers. It's not uncommon to encounter leaders who are held bent to only serve the interests of constituents or constituents. Quite a, quite quite a majority. majority never want to care about what happens beyond their fences. They would gladly contribute in exploiting others outside their domain as long as this does not directly affect them negatively. The champion, they champ, they champion leadership that they champion leadership that is both selfish and heartless. Others do not even care about anything outside their families. You probably see this every day. This is usually the beginning of all the conflicts that we ever see. The world needs more great leaders than great preachers. Leaders will always find will always find ways of solving problems by seeking the solutions that are in the best interest of the majority. This does not mean the majority have to agree with them at the onset, but sooner or later, when when what they were pursuing is revealed, the re people reach an aha moment and proclaim the words of the great poet and clergyman, John Newton, who wrote, I once was lost, but now I'm far. was blind, blind, but now I see. True leaders go for the win, win, win. No one should lose. And this is what will guarantee peace, prosperity, and progress. Not a representative. Leadership is not about following the crowd. It's about influencing the crowd to follow you. It's about seeing the right way for the people, even before they see it. And effectively. and effectively influencing them to buy into your way and willingly follow and support your cause. The, the moment I see people in leadership position failing to take a stand and claiming that they need time to go and consult with their constituents, in most cases, I do not classify such people as leaders, but rather representatives or activists. Representatives are mouthpieces and popularity contestants. They listen to what the voices speak and represent them, amplifying the voices to reach the ears that matter. But a true leader is much more than just a representative. He or she is supposed to be decisive, making decisions guided by intuition and being ready to face the team and share ideas, thoughts and vision. He or she is able to champion for, for a cause and win a following. He does not do things to gain popularity Rather, he gains popularity because he does things. He looks forward not to be correct, but to be right. He stands to be counted even if he's alone, even when it means picking, risking the perks. This is exactly one of the reasons an orchestra is a great analog analogy. The, a director will never teach what people want. He or she will not get popularity. He will only propagate what that which is he is absolutely convinced about as the truth, what is written in the score. He's guided by his knowledge, experience, and intuition. And even if he gets something, next page, please. 
wrong, Something he will wrong. accept he will accept correction from any member who happens to note it because the truth never changes. His orchestra understands this honesty and is willing to obey his direction. The music score is a roadmap, the guiding principle, irrespective of who wrote it. Mm 